What is going on, loud and proud crowd? We are actually at my dad's farm right now. We're gonna be planting a food plot out here. We're gonna be getting on the tractor here in a sec, so for those of you who like the tractor content, here you go. We've got the first shit out here. It's a beautiful, sunny Monday morning, and uh, we're gonna do some food plot work here. Then we might head over to Reagan and I's Ohio property. We might drop some trees over there for some sunlight onto some of our food plots we planted in our previous video. So stay tuned, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And by the way, five times entries are live right now to win this truck plus $5,000 cash. It's an 86,000 mile first gen Cummins, four wheel drive, of course. You can see the huge front differential down there. And it's a beautiful truck, no rust, brand new paint, all this other stuff. Beautiful, beautiful 92, 12 valve Cummins and you could win this truck plus $5,000 cash. Every $1 is gonna get you five entries right now at lmpgear.com. Buy anything off the store and you're automatically entered to win. But 5X entries are gonna be ending on Sunday, March 14th. And I gotta tell you guys, I've been talking about buying a tractor lately and I really do love the size of this 3240 Kubota. But you know, I, I just, I don't know if I necessarily need a tractor even this big. I was trying to tell myself I needed a cab tractor so that I have heat and AC, and well really, it was mostly so that I could take the take the little boy out there with me, my son, and be able to have him in the tractor, and if he wants to stand around in the cab looking out the window and holding on or whatever, like I don't have to worry about him falling out of the tractor because that happened to me one time as a kid. Uh, not on this tractor, but my dad was working on a farm over in Ohio, and I was, I couldn't have been more than three or four years old maybe. I was on his knee, sitting on his knee on a tractor, an open station tractor, going across the field, and we started to go uphill and hit a, hit a small bump, and I fell off the tractor. Now, luckily, my dad hit the brakes immediately and put the clutch in, and he stopped the tractor on a dime, but that's just something that scared me as a kid once, and all you need is for something like that to go wrong, and somebody ends up under a tire, and it just would not be fun at all, and just the thought of it has me a little bit worried. A cab tractor would be great for that use, but the thing is, unless I got like a 35 horse-ish or bigger, the cab might not even really have enough space for it. That's the only issue. But like, I was using this tractor at my Ohio property, and even this tractor was almost too big. Like, it was kind of in the way, kind of hard to get around corners, kind of hard to get in and out of areas, and the trails are very narrow at that property, and I want them to stay that way because the deer love them narrow they're about i mean they're wide enough for this to get through but it's it's close like it's hardly enough room for that to get through and it's like you have to duck your head the whole time going through all my trails because the overhanging branches are so low that you know if it was a cab tractor this tractor even with a cab on it you'd be beating the tar out of the cab on it and there's just there's there'd be so much work to do to make it big enough and wide enough and all the branches you'd have to trim to be able to even take a cab tractor that it would almost be more of a burden to have a cab tractor just to be able to use it than to just not have one but i don't know i don't know we'll see what happens i also thought about just getting a smaller tractor just a little bit smaller than this with no cab on it and saving the twenty thousand dollars and then just getting like a Kubota RTV or something with a cab in it so that, you know, when Reagan goes out there with me, which she does a lot, she could follow behind in the Kubota with a cab on it. That way, you know, we can have heat and AC and all that other stuff so that when her and the kids, I'm sure we're gonna have more, you decide to go out on the property, you know, she can have heat if it's cold or AC if it's hot and everybody can be happy and enjoy the days out on the property because I'm really looking forward to those a lot. I wanna try to be that dad that keeps his kids involved with everything. Everything that I consider to be important to me or important to them, I wanna be involved and I want them to be involved because I just know that that will go a long way with their upbringing and their future and how they spend time with their kids as well. We made it back to the location we're gonna be tilling up here today. We call it the heart-shaped plot because it's a perfect heart. It kind of rounds out in the back, it comes into a V, and then it rounds out in the back again. It comes down to a perfect point here at the entrance. 
Like it's a perfect heart. And it was just always like this when my parents bought the property. It was a perfect heart shape opening back here, but it was just kind of grown up with some goldenrod and stuff. And it was just a little bit grown up. I bush hogged it out. Everything that was under two inch diameter that basically came up to this plot. And basically what it ended up being was a perfect heart shape. And so we just have called it the heart shape ever since. But what we're gonna do in this location is plant clover back in here. That's what I've been doing I'm on the other property as well. I plant clover in areas where there's already plenty of ag opportunities and the deer don't need any more agricultural food. But more importantly, they need something green that spikes up early in the spring and it stays green almost most of the way through the winter. Um, it does go dormant, but usually the deer still hoof it up and they still tear it up and eat it. Even at our Ohio property, or the neighbors next door had a field with just clover and grass out in it, and the deer had just tore it to pieces to get to it in the middle of February. So, I mean, the deer do that. So what we're gonna do is get this all planted up. We're gonna rip this up. It hasn't been planted in clover. And, oh, it was probably two years ago when we stopped maintaining it, but this was actually a really nice location. It was very bright green and all I had to do was come in here with a zero turn and mow it off at the highest setting two or three times throughout the summer. It was beautiful. It was a really good looking plot, but now it's pretty much just nothing. I mean, I came in here and bush hogged it the other night uh, just to mow it down. And now we're gonna come in here and till it up and replant. Done, got the plot all planted. And this is the only one I was gonna do on this property today. I've already got two other clover ones I seeded. I frost seeded those, I didn't till them up because they had a nice cover crop, uh, like a brassica turnip mix from last year and it wasn't all weedy, it was actually pretty nice. So I just frost seeded over those. It should be good, we're gonna get rain in two days. Hopefully that'll give it a nice, nice light packing on the soil and get this to take off. On the road in the 24 valve. I'm trying to get one last drive out of it. This truck leaves in a few days. We're also going to be swinging into a hardware store. I'm going to be picking up some materials to build a custom center console box for Reagan's truck, Rosine. So we're going to be trying to find some pieces for that, some hardware pieces, some boards. Uh, we're going to try to find some nice material to make this center console box. I got the dimensions of what I need. Uh, it's just a matter of finding the right stuff. So we're going to get on over here and get this done and I'll catch you guys back at the house. See them fuel prices shooting up? That's what you get when you have a Democrat in office. Our fuel prices were so freaking low and it was always so cheap to fill up and it's been going up a few cents every day. We made it back over to the house here, picked up some hay for the horse and uh, I'm gonna show you what we're working on. So Reagan's got this 24 valve, right? And she wants to do a custom center console to hide her sub which is huge which she might have to downsize actually she will have to downsize which she loves her she loves her uh, base so that's that's gonna be hard for her to downsize but what she's actually gonna be having me do is make her a center console so she's got this huge sub right but it sits in the middle of her back seat and it fits perfectly in between the front seats like right between this one and that one but it rubs it's real tight and if I build a center console box out of wood, imagine three quarters of an inch on this side and that side, you've already you know, decreased it by an inch and a half of how much width that sub can be. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be just a little bit too big for that sub to fit in the center console. But, so she might just have to sell it and downgrade to a slightly smaller box that fits underneath of this. But what we're gonna be doing is these cup holders are fine, um, but they're not the best but they're better than the, the 12 out second gen cup holders that you used to get. So the box is gonna be 18 inches tall, 26 inches in length, 
which is just a little, like a smidgen longer than the front middle seat here. And it's gonna have a five inch drop angled from here down to here. And we're gonna have a little spot here with two cup holders. And it's gonna be basically just a completely leather wrapped center console. But the difference is gonna be, she's gonna be able to then flip this seat up and set a sub box in the back of this, aiming out the back. That way it's sitting tucked in between the two front seats and not taking up her whole back seat like it is now because every time somebody's like hey can we hop in your truck i'm like well between the couple of things we have in the back seat and our sub no <laughs> you know what i mean like we have no room in here with the sub box so that's going to be the plan uh, i'm going to show you what my idea concept is so we bought some material here we bought some lumber and this doesn't necessarily have to be what you use but we got some aspen one by 16 by three footers and then we got a four footer as well and essentially the height of the box is about perfect because it's going to be 18 is roughly what it needs to be and this is a 16 inch board so it's going to be this plus a three quarters of an inch board on top of this for the top of the box so it's going to bring that elbow rest to be about exactly where the other one is and i want it to be as close to the same size as the middle seat as possible and let me show you what i did in the barn so here is what i've got drawn out so far and essentially what i'm going to do is obviously i got to cut some length off of this and then i took the square and i made my um, section here that's going to drop down a little bit for the cup holders cat and so i made this five inches lower from the top of the console which is going to be here and then it comes over here and then it's going to go down at an angle and then it's going to have like a little five inch shelf here that we're going to take a hole saw and put two holes for cup holder inserts which we're going to order some cool custom ones that are going to be inserted down in there and then it's going to be nice for you to be able to grab your cups and the reason for the angle you don't need to you can keep it nice and square straight down but imagine your wrist on the center console box resting and you want to grab your cup, take a drink and set it back down. If it's a sharp straight down angle, it's going to be a little bit more annoying than if you have a little bit of, little bit of room to grab that cup, take it out, put it back um, versus just like a straight up and down type deal, which it really isn't going to matter. It's going to serve its purpose either way. This might just be adding a little bit to the effect of it to make it more like what Reagan requested. I think for those of you who want to have a sub in your truck, but you don't want to take up the back seat, they do make the ones that sit under the back seat. But for people that don't necessarily want to have their underside of the back seat taken up as well, but they don't really use their middle seat for anything, this is one of those things that you can still keep your under seat storage, you can keep your back seat wide open, and you can just take advantage of that middle front seat, which in most people's vehicles, I would imagine, doesn't hardly ever get used so it makes a really good use for the space to put the sub box under that so you can get it out of the way okay guys here it is we're not obviously done with it yet um, but there's some details that I'm still unable to finish due to not being able to know the for sure dimensions of what I'm going to do. Here's the overall sub box though. And let me go over a couple of things about this, why I designed it the way that I did. In terms of width, I made it 16 inches wide because that's the width of the center console seat that's already in the second gen. Why I have this little shelf here is because we're going to take a small hole saw and we're going to put a hole, perfectly ground hole here measure it out space it perfect and put another one right here and that's going to be for cup holders we may also take a hole right here and measure it side to side and go center and drill like a small uh, one inch hole right in the middle and then maybe put like a uh, black finished piece of metal that's round some kind of almost like a bushing type thing um, and then just once we have the leather on here with the hole there then tap that down into the center there that way it's finished and so we can fish our uh, charging cords through there for the box as well the box should fit just about perfect i did leave a small gap at the bottom here um, that way if she needs to run you know our charging cord wires up through the center here under the carpet or something under like a floor mat and then feed them up through we can or if she needs to run any kind of 
cords or wires to her sub, she can do that as well. Um, it's just a one inch gap I left at the bottom for that reason. But if she decides for some reason she's, she doesn't need that, um, we could also just drill a hole up under, right in the center down underneath where you'll never see it and then just have the leather wrap completely go over and cover up that little gap there. And then in the back, I left the back of this wide open just because we don't know what size sub she's going to get yet. And I didn't want to close this off without knowing that because I'm pretty sure she's going to want it to fit perfectly to where it's facing out the back. And then we might, once we put it in there, we know for sure how big it's going to be. What we might do is put like some half inch by two, just like a lip around, like a trim, like around the back of it and then we can basically do it like that. That way the sub itself can't slide out of the box. And then also, of course, once we measure how deep the sub is gonna be, like if it only goes back to here or it goes way back there, then measure and cut and put a board back in there as a bumper. Um, so that way between the front trim and the rear bumper board that we put in there, it can't slide around because of course you don't want that happening. This should work. I'm gonna take her center console out of her truck and then just make sure that this sits down in there before we take this to get leather wrapped. So we were actually able to set the box in. I just had to pop out a few bolts for the center console, but here is the box itself. It looks really big, I know, but you gotta think about it. The sub going in is huge and uh this one is still too big even with this box being as big as it is and i know there's like a couple little gaps here and there just because of the fitment of the boards and stuff i'm not very good at doing like angle cuts and stuff like that so they match up perfectly but the upholstery guy is going to be wrapping the whole thing in leather anyways um and so these little tiny holes and stuff aren't going to be a big game changer um but uh, it's gonna it's gonna work pretty good, I think. The way that I have it set, it stops right before the four-wheel drive shifter location here, so you can fully shift this back and forth, no problem. And you've still got plenty of room to flip this back up and drop it down if you still want to use those cup holders as well. But in the back seat, it's not slid back very far to where it takes up any of your leg room in the back because you don't want to sacrifice the back seat space by putting this in. The whole point of this was just to replace the center console location and put the sub box inside this thing, which you could easily do. You can see all that room in there to put a sub box. And if you pull the levers on the seat here, this seat does flip up and it'll flip all the way up and flat so you can put your sub in there and then just flip it back down and that'd be the same way you would take it back out of course. Let me give you another perspective from the passenger side here. Here's the passenger side. Drop that seat back so you can see it a little bit better. What are you doing? <laughs> I ran her cord through here temporarily so she can have her cord up here. We gotta cut the holes through here for the cup holders and then um, take it to get leather wrapped and then he's gonna have the holes cut out for where the cup holder is gonna be and then we're just gonna drop the inserts in. They're gonna be a snug, like snap-in insert. It's gonna be like iodized, like a black color. It's gonna look really good. Now you don't have your storage anymore like you did with the second gen center console. You have the flip up storage. But the thing of that is, with the sub box that we're gonna be going with in here, you're not gonna have any room to store anything in there anyways because it's gonna pretty much take up all the room between here to here, straight up and down. You'd have like some empty gap below here, but again, you gotta put the cups in here, the things, and they're gonna drop down about like that to hold your cups and stuff. So every inch of that sub box is pretty much gonna be used and uh, you're not gonna have a lot of extra space really. Armrest height. It's a little bit higher than the other one was, but it's just what you gotta do to fit a freaking monster sub under that thing. So it's 26 inches in total length at the longest points. And the actual measurement in terms of height is like 17 and a half the base up to the flat top right there and that's with it sitting on top of the second gen brackets that are already there because what i'm going to do is actually just drill the holes where those other metal brackets are already on the um, seat frame and then just run a nut on the inside of the box and keep it bolted down just like that with uh, a washer 
and then a nut on the inside and it'll just keep it sandwiched and nice and tight. And then the width of this is exactly 16 inches. Exactly 16 wide. Cup holder location here is about six inches in terms of space there. This little angle here was four and a half. And then just the top board was 18 inches exactly. Very simple and pretty quick to make. And then if you have a good upholstery shop close by, they can leather wrap this for you. Any upholstery shop that knows what they're doing should be able to leather wrap this pretty easy. It'll probably be three or 400 bucks, I'm guessing, to do the leather wrapping. Well worth the money to have it done the right way the first time. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, smash that thumbs up. Leave your comments down below. Subscribe if you have not done so yet. And if you want to enter to win this truck plus $5,000 cash, every $1 you spend on LMPgear.com is going to get you five entries until this Sunday, March 14th. And then 5X entries are gone. And these, just like 10X, uh, they also will not be back. Grab those entries while you can. All you gotta do is go to the website, place an order, and you could win this truck plus $5,000 cash. And the giveaway is ending here later this March. And all the information you use under your order info is what gets submitted for your entries for contact info and email and all that stuff. So that's how that works. And you do not need a PayPal or Amazon account to place your orders. A lot of people think that since they see the PayPal icon on the store, that's what you need, but you actually don't. So you're all good there. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for all the love and support. We'll catch you in the next video. Peace.